In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the process for authoring and publishing custom frame members to use with Inventor's Frame Generator. Now I'm going to work through this entire process and we need to start at the beginning. It's very important before you begin this process to check your project file and make sure that you have a read-write library available. I'm going to click on my project button and down here on the side of the project dialog box, I'm going to select this button here and expand it. This shows me a list of all of my libraries and I want you to notice I actually have a read-write library called testing listed right here. If you don't have one, you can simply click this button and create your own library. So let's get started by creating our own custom profile to use with the frame generator. I've opened up a new part. This is going to be an English or inch based part for this example. And I'm simply going to generate a flat bar with some chamfers on it. So I'm going to use my chamfer tool. I'm going to set up a parameter here for the chamfer value. So chamfer equals uh, one uh, point one two five, and I'm going to add the chamfers at each corner. Now I want to make sure my profile is centered at zero, so I'm going to add a vertical constraint between the center point and the midpoint there, and a horizontal constraint here. Now I need to add the dimensions that are going to control the width and the thickness of my member. So let's start a dimension. We're going to go from this edge to this edge. We'll set this up to be width equals 4. That'll be my default value. And then from this line to this line we'll represent the thickness. So I'll type in THK equals 1. So there is our custom profile. I'm almost finished generating the initial shape. I want to do an extrusion. And while I'm doing the extrusion, I'm actually going to use a parameter called length. We're going to set that equal to 1 inch. So that is the general shape I want to use as my custom profile inside a frame generator. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, I'm going to call it flat bar chamfer. I'm going to overwrite the one I have done already. Now, there are three different versions that I want to include, so I can pick three different sizes while I'm using the frame generator. And in order to do that, I need to convert this to an iPart. On the Manage tab, I'm going to go over and select the Create iPart command. And you can see the naming of the parts come in automatically, along with any named parameter. Now, I'm going to right-click and select two more rows here. And the first thing I'm going to do is modify the names. So we're going to go with 4 by 1. When you modify the first one, you'll get that warning. And you want to modify the member and the part number. And then we want to do the same thing for the next two. This is going to be 3 by 1. And finally, 2 by 1. Definitely want to make sure to modify the width parameter for this. So that one's going to be 3, and this one's going to be 2. So I'll click OK, and then over in the browser, the table appears, and you want to take the opportunity to test these and make sure you get the desired result. So I'm simply double clicking on each version, and I'll set it back to 4 by 1. And again, we want to save the component. Now I want to begin the process of authoring the structural shape. On the Author panel, on the Manage tab, Author panel, I'm going to use the Fly Out and use the Structural Shape option. This is basically a wizard that will help me set up my part so that it becomes the correct model to use inside a frame generator. For my category in this example, I'm just going to choose Other, and it's just going to use the base extrusion by default and the center of the profile will always be set up by default as well. Now I want to be able to notch this so I'm going to select notch and pick that first profile that we did earlier. On the parameter mapping tab we're going to keep this as simple as I can. I just want to track the length in this case so for base length 
I'm going to come over and select the length option I named earlier. Now if I click OK, I'm going to click OK here. You could click Publish Now. But really the big difference here is that the part is remodeled with a specific start plane and end plane and an extrusion that passes between the two. Now to actually publish it, I'm going to start the command again. And in this, in, in this example, I'm going to come down and select Publish Now. This actually starts the publishing process and I am going to send this to my read-write library that I mentioned earlier. We'll click Next. Again, it's already set up for me. I've basically made all these choices. So we'll click Next. Again, it's already set up with the length moving out to the base length. And then I get to this option in the dialog. This is how I want to be able to choose the members when I'm placing them in with the frame generator. And I actually want to choose them by the member name. So I'm just going to bring that over. We'll click Next, and the categories here for the family name, uh, the family description, I'm simply going to copy that and paste it so that it basically says the same thing over and over. And I will put in my company name for the manufacturer. Now I've already published this one time, so I'm going to close this. And let's take a look at how we can use our frame member now. I have a simple assembly with a skeletal frame sitting on the main plane and I'm going to use the frame generator. I'm going to insert my frame. You can actually see that the flat bar chamfer is now available in the list for me. And if I go to the size, I can choose any one of the sizes I mentioned are created earlier. So I'm just going to come in and select all of these lines. We'll click OK and basically let the tool create those bars for me. And then this is just a basic frame generator exercise. I can go in and miter the corners. And we can notch out the middle bar in way of the end bars. If I were to double click this middle bar, I could zoom in and see that it is notched perfectly in way of that bar. Now there is another way that you can actually generate custom members to use with your frame generator. Let's say for instance you need a special size of an existing member that doesn't exist in the standard category. Let's take a look at that process next. I'm going to close this file and our previous file. And again, on my project panel, I want to make sure that my active project does have a read-write library. So it's very important that that happens. And again, in this case, it is my testing library. So I'll click OK there. Now, on the Tools panel, I'm actually going to choose the Content Center Editor. I actually want to go in and modify uh, one of the square tubes here. So here is my ANSI square tube, and I want to create one that has some custom sizes. Now to do that, I simply right click on this and select Save Copy As. Now I'm going to save it to my testing library, and I'm going to call it uh, Custom Square Tube. I'll place that there. It's going to be independent of the other one. We'll click OK. And here's my custom square tube uh, in my training or my testing library. Now, I want to modify the sizes here, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to the family table. Now, everything in here, these are the, what I want to do here is actually create some smaller tubes. The smallest tube here is 2 by 2 by 3 16 so I'm going to take everything in here except for that very first one and delete it. Uh, don't need those things, so we'll go ahead and delete those. Now I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible, just as this example, but I am going to change the designation here to 1 by 1 by 3 16 I'm going to modify the height. That's going to be 1 and the width. Basically we're just editing the Excel spreadsheet here. 
and I'm going to leave everything else in place. If you're doing this in production though, you're going to want to come in and create the correct radius value to put that in place, and you're also going to want to calculate the mass pounds per foot for the actual part. You have to do those calculations and fill them out, but everything else here should update automatically. Now I'm going to click the apply button. It is possible to copy this, uh, so I can right click on the row, copy and paste it, or add another row and have it copy the row down to the other. But in this case, this is the only custom shape that I need, so I'm just going to select OK. And we'll click Done. Now I want to open up that base frame that we were using earlier, and we're going to test our new size in the frame generator inside of this design. So I'm going to go back over and start the frame generator. And in this case, I want to make sure that I set my standard to ANSI. That's where I started. And then in the family, if I come down and look, I'll actually see this option right here, custom square tube that we created. There's only one size, but I do have to select it. And then I can come in and add these bars again very quickly. And of course, I can miter these just like we did in the previous example. So this is going to conclude our demonstration for authoring and publishing custom frame members. If you have any questions about this presentation, please feel free to contact your local Imaginate Technologies support representative.